So, since our characters in Trinkets met in SA, uh, and since we're done done filming now, I guess, is there anything you guys can admit to stealing from set? Uh, <laughs> it's funny, actually. Like, I have this water bottle that literally says stolen uh, from the set of Trinkets. <laughs> Word. I didn't steal it, but I didn't actually steal it. Okay, when you guys read through the season two scripts, um, was there anything that surprised you or anything that like you weren't expecting or like, how did you feel about reading through the scripts? Um, I was surprised by Elodie's new love interest. That was surprising, I guess. I didn't realize that it would happen so quickly and that we would get so much into that. Um, and that was fun. Also, like it was a lot more comedic which was fun to read. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, I guess Luca. That was surprising. I think for me, like the most surprising part for Tabitha was the fact that she just gets box braids. I mean, like that's like every, I feel like person's dream who has like <laughs> mad curly hair. <laughs> And it's just like, it's like, you know, you don't have to wake up extra early in the morning and like fix your hair up for set. So it's just like, that was amazing to read. Like Tabitha's entire journey through like uh, coming into her, um, herself, like her culture, her like mom's like background. That was very like, kind of like overwhelming, but in like a really positive way. It was like, damn, like we're tackling this and it's, it's like bomb. Like we're saying everything that needs to be said. So that was very surprising. I was surprised that Ben, like Mo's brother, came back and that, spoiler, that uh, <laughs> Mo's dad came back. Like two like additions to the family was like a lot in just 10 episodes. Also like just like Mo's whole storyline with um, her new friends. Just like a lot of like new additions to Mo's life that like I wasn't expecting, but was like very fun to handle. So out of all three of us, which one of us do you guys think is most similar to their character in real life. Mm. Okay, I'm gonna just like call out myself. <laughs> I feel like Tabitha and I are like very alike, unfortunately. You know, That's like so circus. crazy. I, yeah. Mostly because, because like, I feel like when we started, you were like, Tabitha and I, we don't have much in common, so it's hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I did say that, yes. Um, <laughs> but like thinking about it in like retrospect, it's like interesting. Cause like looking at her and like looking at like how she masks all of this like insecurity with like just stuff, like, I don't know, the, the stealing and all of that shit. But just like the beautification like of herself, I feel like it is like very fascinating to look at um, through like a, like a black lens or like a biracial lens and kind of like conceptualizing that like even more and like the grand scheme of things like of where she's at, her environment and all of that stuff. And so I just like, I identify with it cause it's just like, you know, I was in the same place, you know, wondering like, how much of like my black identity is like apparent or like how much you know like i can identify within like a certain like you know identification or anything so i feel like that like i feel tabitha and i are like not connected okay um brianna season two picks up with um elodie on tour with sabine after running away um was that something that you and then she comes back to portland so coming back to Portland, was that something that you expected or were you surprised that Elodie decided to come back to Portland and leaving tour? Uh, I definitely wasn't surprised because I feel like the whole show is about <laughs> the three of us. And I feel like that would have been really kind of lame <laughs> if like the show just continued with you guys and then I'm just hanging out with Sabine, like just, you know, doodling around on a uke. I feel similar to Brianna, like, uh, I was expecting Elodie to come back, but I guess anything could have happened. Like, I, I don't know. I, I, it probably was not likely that we would have joined on tour. So <laughs> I guess I, I was, I never thought about it too much. But then when I, when I read it, I was like, that makes sense. I'm glad it happened quickly too. We didn't like, it wasn't such a long time that we were apart. So I was happy about that. Mo just goes through it this season. So much like happens to her. How do you... How do you feel about all of those things? And what stuck out to you um, as the most compelling thing that um, Mo had like embraced or experienced this season? Interesting word, compelling. 
Thank you. Um, I would say I really like the fact that Mo started off drinking a lot started off stealing in season two, drinking, and then just really embraced her academic strengths mm -hmm. and like reluctantly at first, but then really did embrace it and met new friends. That like I wasn't expecting, especially because season one, like most super closed off and even allowing Tabitha and Elodie in was a big step. You know what was really compelling, like to see you kind of like, was just that whole scene when like um, Mo's dad just like comes, like comes into like my house and it's just like, wait, what? I know. You know, I like, know. Your character, she went through so much. That's like yeah. really put into perspective. There's definitely content out there where you see like younger teens who are figuring out their queerness, but I feel like it's just not as much as, you know, just a regular, regular heterosexual relationship. Um, and I think for me personally, it's really fun to like, see a teen or somebody who's just figuring themselves out sort of navigate like how to flirt with someone of the same sex when you're used to just treating people as friends and like mm. what that means and um how to make you know known that you have a crush on someone without making it weird or without them thinking that you guys are just best friends i think it's like really fun to see that uh sort of work itself out because generally when you're new to it you don't really have a lot of control over the way those things <laughs> work out so yeah i think that's something that's really special about especially season two of of this show is that you really get to see uh elodie like figure out what all of this means i was gonna say um something that i appreciate about trinkets is like in terms of elodie and sabine and the age difference like I was watching it with a friend of mine who's gay and he was saying like, it's, it's, he was telling me that in his experience, it's very, it's common for like, you know, younger people who are queer to, um, to, I guess to date older people or like to have like a big age difference. And the fact that that was like highlighted in trinkets, I thought like, I don't see that a lot on screen, which like I appreciated that. Yeah. That's actually like really fascinating because mm -hmm. like if you think about it, yeah, 100%. And then it's kind of like, I feel like with the first season with Elodie and uh, Sabine's relationship, there was so much pushback to it. Mm -hmm. And I think like the reality of the situation is and Trinket's being so like honest in its portrayal of like, like, I don't know, like young girls navigating high school. It's just like, um, that's a reality. So yeah. I, I feel like sometimes like people like seeing that and having to like deal with that right in front of them is kind of like, oh my God. But it's like, yeah. oh, that's the nature of the beast, honey. Um, Quintessa, how did it feel to finally expose Brady and make him feel like garbage? It's an interesting one. Cause I feel like part of me, uh, well, I guess it's not even a Quintessa question. It's like a Tabitha question. I felt like Tabitha, not only kind of like received, I don't know, just like this emotional and like physical release. I don't know, at the end of the day, it's always like sad, like seeing someone kind of like fall to like the things that they've like disrupted for themselves, i.e. like Brady and like the problems that he's had because Tabitha experiences that. She, there's like a flashback in our, in our season and she sees kind of like Brady's brother and Brady's mother and father and what that environment has created Brady to be like. And I think that kind of makes her like understand like, oh, like maybe this person has the capacity to get better. Or maybe this is just like his like way of like coping, but it's not like ex excusable. Mm -hmm. So I think it's like interesting because she feels bad about it. But at the same time, it's like this person's now hurting another person whom like I love and have like a deep, like nurturing relationship with. And oh, to see that effect or that abuse like right in front of my eyes um, in Tabitha, you know, in Tabitha world. I think, you know, it just like pushes her to like let that be known and to like let people understand like Brady and like this isn't like a great guy. And no matter like what he's gone through, there's no like, you know, like excusable way to like hurt someone or treat someone emotionally or physically. Now that we have reached, you know, our last season, what do you feel like everyone who watches can take away from it? 
I guess the biggest uh, thing and probably maybe the most obvious thing that I would want someone to take away from the show is that you just have to open yourself up to be connected to people. Um, you have to be vulnerable in order to mm. relate to anyone or gain anyone's trust or feel comfortable uh, talking to them and you know being better friends in the future. And I think that that's one thing that we uh, do really well on the show is that all of our characters are always uh, sharing their vulnerabilities with each other and that's how their relationship started even. Um, and I think that's super inspiring and probably really important for teens to know and stay aware of, especially when, I don't know, I feel like high school is really isolating these days. That's kind of what I would want people to take away too, like just knowing that you're not alone there's so many people and people who might look different than you, um, mm. like, you know, different sexualities, different like places that they're from. Like you don't need to surround yourself with people who are exactly the same as you. Allow yourself to change and allow yourself to try new things. And yeah, just kind of be easy on yourself, like figuring shit out because <laughs> everyone's going through it. Preach. Yeah, I think, I mean, you guys like summed it up like amazingly. I just like hope that when people watch our show, I guess like in the current state of like the world, this country, that like they take home kind of like this understanding of their own sense of conviction and just being like strong and like their ideas, they how they want to identify, how they feel and like understanding that those those things like change constantly.